Oilers post game after a hard fought overtime win for the Okotoks Oilers 4 3 over the Black Falls Bulldogs. And uh, an Oiler defenseman who made some news and also played a heck of a lot tonight is number 10, Brennan Hawker. And uh, Brennan, just before talking about obviously your commitment, which was great news this week, tell me about this game here tonight. How you guys, as a decor with only five guys out there with one of the best offensive teams in the country coming down on you, hold them pretty well considering the circumstances you were in. How impressed were you with the defensive group tonight? Yeah, I mean, it was a gutsy group, uh, win from our group. I mean, obviously shorthanded with McGuire and O'Haller and McGowan out. So definitely big win today and obviously got the comeback again, down 3-2. So that was awesome. How tired would you say you guys were in the last minutes of the third period? But at the same time, how much did the tightness of the game and just the atmosphere kind of maybe give you an extra bit of gas in the tank too? I think the general, adrenaline was pumping for everyone. Like everybody was still up on the bench. Like even after taking tough hits at the end there, everybody was up wanting to play. And even an OT, everybody was up. Everybody had energy and yeah, we got the win, so. So there's energy on the ice also all throughout the building too. Biggest crowd since the team moved to the BCHL, just under 1,300. How much do you guys notice that, especially when probably four or 500 of them were screaming kids who really got the noise going? I mean, it's obviously a huge, huge advantage, like having the crowd on your side. It's just a big energy booster, and obviously we needed that today with us being shorthanded, 5D, so yeah, it was great. Tell me about just the feeling on the bench when you see, you know, Sam Huck skating in. You already know that's the guy you want to have the puck in overtime. When that puck finds the back of the net, just the reaction from you guys and the overall feeling, what's it like to describe? I mean, that's just hockey. That's just every day. I mean, like, he's done it before and he does it again, so it's just hockey, man. So enough about everybody else. Let's talk a bit about you. Uh, you solidify your D1 commitment this week, announcing that you're going to the University of Nebraska, Omaha, a heck of a program that's produced a lot of really high-end pro players down the stretch as well. Tell me a bit about how they jumped onto your radar and, and why it was now that you decided you know, this was where you wanted to have your NCAA D1 future. I mean, they were on me at the start of the year, and I was talking to them, got a good trip out, and I just love the place. I feel like my heart is there, and yeah, I love the coaches, love the facilities, so I think that's the place for me. You've had a heck of a year coming from a guy who started as an affiliate with this team, became a full-time guy when they needed you, and now you've been earning more and more time. How different would you say you feel as a hockey player right now compared to the guy that was figuring out where he was going to be in August? I, it's a it's a world of a difference, right? Like it's so nice now that I kind of know where I'm going and where I am right now. And playing in the BCHL is obviously a step up in competition, so it's great for my development. I feel like I'm improving every day. Yeah, everybody after this game is talking about how games since you guys have switched leagues, you you can't take a game off, you can't take a shift off, and no better example than tomorrow where shockingly Brooks didn't play tonight and you guys have to play them after a lengthy one here tonight uh, what do you guys want to see to keep building on uh, what's obviously been a, a very uphill path for you as of late I mean even being shorthanded we need to focus on our D zone that's the biggest thing against them limiting their score clog in the middle and obviously we want a goal like so we can win the game but just keeping their score low is the key for us Appreciate this, Brendan. Congrats on the commitment and the big win. Thank you so much. Joined now by the birthday boy, 27-year-old assistant coach for the Okotoks Oilers, Reed Natowich. And just first of all, Reed, happy birthday. And second of all, was this game the nicest birthday present you could have asked for? Absolutely. Like, I think uh, any time, you know, you're you're down and stuff like that and you can come back uh, is, is positive. And, like, what a, what a good group effort uh, from our D managing having low numbers forwards being tenacious and aggressive and then obviously uh, our goaltending thought it was a good game. Jack Silverberg first start tonight's game two goals you know really big goals of course as well and just how has he helped guide your team forward through what has been you know an up and down stretch I would say as you've gone into the BCHL here. Like, really good natural leadership from him. So I think, like, he's a guy, um, not necessarily kind of the most loud or vocal, um, but he leads by example, and he's a really good communicator with regards to, to talking to guys. I think his game, like, what he's doing differently and what he's bringing to the table, he's been way more aggressive in terms of his net front presence. You look at the goals tonight, him just going into good areas and, and getting things that are, are coming off of those, right? Good plays from Fetchner there. But it's him being... In, in the middle of the ice when he's there he's super skilled he has good vision um so it's it's pushing the pace consistently getting there and you see when he does it good things happen i think you said off mike that these last three games have been among your strongest since you've come over from the bchl and just what changes have you seen this team make that has helped uh, smooth things along here of late 
Well, I think obviously getting like adjusted to the the pace of play, like you know, we're playing different rosters than what we were January 10th of um, the Alberta Junior League season. So, adapting um, to that, I think, is a is a big one. Understanding what our strengths are as a team, um, but then really like just overall commitment to like being desperate, especially with regards to our defensive play. Um, you know, where things used to happen and transpire that we could get away with can't get away with now um so just managing our pace of play knowing what we're good at and just trying to push our pace continuously tomorrow's a really big game obviously you're going back to brooks uh, uh, an arena in which you haven't had a whole lot of success this season but what makes you confident that tomorrow might be different well, like I think obviously like we need to um, build off what we uh, what we did tonight. Um, you know, you, you play these guys, you, you learn um, you learn more every time in the sense. So we need to revisit what we did uh, last game, build off of it. At the end of the day, we know they're uh, extremely aggressive with regards to their offense. So we'll focus on our structure, our D zone first making sure we play to uh, their zero and then offensively, uh, you know, little out of the book tonight with regards to just getting into the middle, making it a hard night for their goaltender. That is Oilers assistant coach Reed Natowich. Thanks for the time, Reed. Thank you. Leading the way offensively with two goals tonight, it's forward Jack Silverberg and uh, Jack a heck of a night, even before talking about your two goals earlier in the game. How would you describe the mood of this team after these last two wins, not just because they were wins, but the way that they both came? Yeah, no, it was huge. Both those comeback wins are really helping us. Like, we had really strong numbers at the year. We'll see them this new season and get these two like huge for us. I think what's been really cool, too, is to see how the teams responded really well when things maybe haven't gone your way. You've had deficits in this one, and you guys don't tend to, you know, snowball with tough shifts after tough shifts. How good have you guys felt your responses have been to some of the tougher shifts since joining this? Yeah, no, we just have no quit as a team. All of our boys just want to win, and they want to, they want to go playoffs here, they want to make the stretch. So every point counts, and we're trying to get them out. So take me back to your first goal. I'll set you up for the classic sort of hockey player answer, which is I think goal number one, you give a lot of credit to a line mate on a nice set. Yeah, absolutely. Fetch gave me a great pass through a guy's legs, I think, and ended up on my tape, so I'm going to have to put that one in. And of course, uh, the former DD Thunder connections keep on coming uh, with this team. What have you thought of the way Hayden's really stepped up as of late, especially since this league switch? He's one of the team's leading scorers, and for a guy who's maybe a little bit lower in terms of ice time to start the year, what's it meant to the forward core that you can get points, you can get these great setups, you know, from top to bottom in the lineup as well? Yeah, it's absolutely huge. I've had the pleasure to play with him the last couple of games, and he's really turned on. He's got four goals in two games. I think he has two two goal games, so it's been awesome. And then your second goal, and I still got to go and look at it on the replay system again, because you take the shot, it ends up in the back of the net, uh, fill in the blanks between the two forwards. Yeah, I actually thought it might have gone off rolling, but when I looked at it again, I think it went off of three guys, the goalie and the team at the end, so we'll take it, I guess. Yeah, take it anywhere they come. And then uh, into OT, uh, just your thoughts on how your team uh, managed to get it done in the extra frame. Obviously, if there's one guy who's sticky on the puck on, it's probably the guy who ends up scoring the OT winner. But just you know, the, the energy that you have going into OT and how you were able to cap it off. What did you think of the overall? Yeah, we have a super deep team. So we can just roll. It's a 10-minute OT in BC, so we can just roll three, four lines and we can work out for ourselves. So how about the, the intensity of these games as of It seems like ever since you guys have switched to the BCHL, there have been you know, a couple of tough games in there. Even games that have had wide margins, the chances are pretty close, the shots are still pretty tight. As kind of intense as that is for the players, how much have you guys embraced that very different style of play from what we've been used to earlier? Yeah, the hockey's awesome. Rob. This is the way our team wants to play. And, uh, it's been no easy games. You can't take weeks off. Don't so, you know. We know tonight you guys can't take off tomorrow, right? Because you head to Brooks and, oh, shocker, Brooks didn't play tonight. So you guys get to be the tired ones against the fresh defending champs. But, you know, there have been spurts in the games against Brooks where when you guys have really shown what you're capable of. Second periods were kind of tough these last few games, but today was probably the best of the, the recent stretch. So what do you guys want to keep building on to make tomorrow night a day? Kind of yeah, I think if we focus on, on their score more than ours, like we, we have a lot of business like you said, so if we can lock that down, we'll be a chance. Appreciate this, Jack. Congrats on the big win. Thank you. Appreciate it.